Good evening, everyone. I think we've got everyone here. Lunatic, Fafi, and Alex is here. What's up, Raga? Yeah, how's it going? I think our previous spaces got rugged. I don't know what happened. About 200 people was set their alerts on, and then I just couldn't get it to start. Oh, man. It's all your fault, <laughs> dude. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, I had one job to host your spaces with you guys, and I couldn't get it to work. Just fucked it up. <laughs> I think someone's attacking the quant team and maybe I'm being attacked because I'm trying to help you guys. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a DDoS. DDoS yeah. Is um, Redline joining us or is it just us for tonight? He should be. He was He was just asking. Let me... Uh, uh, give me a cool. second. And then, guys, if you're listening, if you can please retweet myself, uh, Lunatic, Fafi, or if you can share it because the previous one isn't working, the main link. So I had to set up a new one. So if you can just retweet um, so people don't miss out on these spaces. I'm going to I'm gonna put a tweet out as well and whilst we wait for Redline to join. You can, we can also wait another like two or three more minutes like and just see if, see if some other people can uh, figure this yeah, out. Yeah, I think Redline's here as well. I'm going to add him. How's everyone else doing apart from Lunk and Crypto? Are you guys doing well in your general lives? Uh, it's been very busy, a uh, very, very busy uh, week. Uh, you know, we've got lots of uh, stuff going on, but overall, uh, doing well. Things are going well. Uh, making some good progress that we'll discuss uh, in a minute. So, so far, I won't complain. That's good to hear. Fafi, do you want to do you want to maybe just lead it off with uh, kind of like a you know, five minute? Yes, update. I, I can do that. Uh, I can do that. So hi everyone, uh, Fafi here from the front team. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good week and a good weekend. So in this space, we'll be talking mostly about two things, right? So one. It's going to be uh, the famous uh, burning of, uh, of uh, the zombie wallet, the zombie USTC wallet. So we have Alex here with us, who is going to explain us a bit more what are these USTCs, where they're coming from, like what are the props uh, currently ongoing, etc. He felt that people were getting a bit confused because you've heard like many, many things. So it's good to have the guy who is very uh, well on point uh, on this topic to kind of uh, shed some light for us. So that's one thing. The other thing is we're going to be talking, obviously, about our progress, where we're at, and what we have been doing with uh, Red Lines proposal. So it's been like four to five weeks now. Uh, what have been? Uh, what have we done? Where are we at? Do we have some results, etc.? By the way, I'm going to just uh, attach the latest uh, version of the report that we've been working on in the Nest. Uh, please go take a look. It might not open well on your mobile, so ideally you have a, a, a computer or a laptop. If you don't see any charts, please head, hit refresh, but hopefully that helps you guys to follow through and have some visuals as we're going to be talking about these things. Cool. So you mentioned the 800 million burn. Um, I saw your post about the impact of it if, if, you, if you didn't burn it and it went to the community pool. Could you talk a bit more about that, Fafi? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we, have, we have like there is like a wallet containing 800 million USDC uh, that uh, Vegas has uh, basically uh, come up with a prop asking to send these funds back to the community pool so that we can take a share of it and use it uh, to fund builders. So that's the story. Okay? Now, when we say we're going to take a share of it to fund builders, 
It means that basically you need to take some of this USTC, for example, 400 million, the half of it, and actually go sell it on the market because builders, people, like you need to pay your bills in USD, right? So you need to pay your bills in dollar, in fiat, so that people can get paid and happy and pay for their expenses, etc. So if you want USTC to go up and be repegged, right? You certainly don't want to sell USTC because when you sell an asset, what does it do? It goes down. You don't want that, right? So we think that uh, taking a share of this wallet and putting it, putting it back to the market to sell is an extremely bad idea, especially given the fact that you have a very thin liquidity in USTC. This is not LUNC, Right, so the market is very thin. I think you have like 250k liquidity across, uh, like in all sex, uh, in minus plus 2 percent. So that's basically what this means is that you can easily, if you start selling, uh, I think here in total, the market value, which is not the value you would actually get by selling these assets, the market value so far is like something like 10 million dollars. Right. So if you start selling $10 million into a market which doesn't have much liquidity, you will move the price and you will move it down. And that's not good at all. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing is that we want to repay USTC. Right. So imagine like in one year, two years from now, we have achieved this. We're happy. USTC is now pegged, for example, at $1. All right. So any of this USTC that we're giving today, right for pretty much free tomorrow is going to be worth one dollar so if you get like you get away 400 million USTCs, it means that in one year once we have like achieved what we wanted to do you need to find 400 million dollars back to actually collateralize these USTCs. otherwise they won't be collateralized and then USTC won't be pegged so really what we're saying here is that we're gonna basically these USTCs to fund builders is akin to shorting USTC today at the current price, let's say 0.01 cents, uh, dollar, sorry, which is one cents. Okay. And then you will have to buy back the 400 million USTC at one dollar. So that's a horrible, you wouldn't do this trade. It's terrible because it creates like a massive red PNL. And that's essentially what we're asking to do when we say, hey, let's sell this USTC so we're going to fund builders. Nope, that's not a good idea. We do not want to burn these USTCs to pump the price. We simply want to burn them so that it makes it easier to repeg USTC so that we have less cash to find to collateralize USTC. And so what the, the, the thing that we certainly don't want to do is go and short the asset that we want uh, the price to go up only to buy it back much uh, at a much higher price later. And of course, we won't be able to do so because that's definitely the kind of money we won't be able to find. If we can't find $400 million today, we certainly can't find $400 million tomorrow. So that's the idea behind it. Yeah, perfect. Like, um, just to add to add to that, um, I totally totally agree with everything Fafi just said. Um, I think um, I do. There is one um, kind of um, uh, kind of honest um, uh, concern uh, with this prop that that I think is worth talking about. Um, and so, I, I posted. I made a post on my Substack about it, um, but. Um, but not everybody reads Substack, so just to kind of briefly recap that. So, um, so there's this uh, people like um, like Strathcole, for example, uh, whom you guys, whom we all know as a very kind of conscientious, um, you know, hardworking guy who's done a lot of different uh, uh, good things for the community. He brought up this um, he brought up this objection that. Um, that kind of rewriting the blockchain state is state is sacred, right? And you hear a lot of crypto OGs use this phrase, a state is sacred. And what does that mean? Well, when when a blockchain is 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 operating and it's it's like um, every six seconds in the case of our chain, there is a six, seven, eight seconds, there is a 
a new block is added to the chain. And, and what that literally means is that the, the computers of the 130 validators uh, on our chain, they all, um, they all present to each other the same, or the, their version of the set of transactions that has happened within that uh, period of time. And when, uh, when I guess more than two thirds of them agree on what that set of transactions is, um, that uh, that uh, that extra those extra transactions are, are 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 written into the next block, and that block is added to the chain, and that is called the shared state. That's called the state of of all those blocks that all the uh, validators have agreed on. Is is the uh, kind of like the the state machine of the chain, uh, like all the computers working together to maintain this uh, continuous um, ledger. And so the argument is, well, if, if you know, our, our computer, you know, we're in crypto and like, like we have this network consensus process. And if we just go back in time and, and tear up some, some ledger entries, because we feel like it, it then, then, how is this any different th from uh, from fiat um, money? And you know, are we kind of abandoning you know the the most sacred principles that make crypto different? And I agree. I ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I would agree. I, I would. I, I'm like I very instinctively follow that that train of logic. Um, but in the case of USTC here. Um, this is a this is a stable coin that is nine point six billion dollars in debt, and um, ultimately, at least ninety percent of this debt is going to have to be like restructured, uh, which basically means written off. And the only way you can write off debt um, in a in a blockchain that was algorithmically programmed to maintain debt uh, was is to is to um, rewrite the state of the chain and we're going to have to do this several times actually as with the community addresses different pools of zombie funds not just the 800 million here but there's there's several other pools that will have to be addressed in the same way and um and so that um uh so for USTC to have a future, we will we we will have to rewrite the state of of the chain to to reflect um, to reflect some of these transactions, and it's doubly true because um, you know there have been a lot of attempts to reach out to the Ozone Wallet uh, multi-sig owners and um, um, by a lot of different people, and um, uh, I guess. Um, the vast preponderance of the evidence suggests that they've already made up their minds um, to to um, to abandon it, um, and um, and also legally they're very strongly incentivized to um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, they're strongly incentivized to just say nothing, and so I think um, it's incumbent on us to 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 do to to handle this. Um, and nobody else is going to do it for us. Um, uh, there was, I think, Strath Cole had said, "Well, you know, why don't we wait until wait and see if if they do it for us?" And um, there's a lot of evidence, not all of which we can we can talk about in this call, but there, there's just there's a there's a lot of evidence that that's not going to happen. Um, so, I guess that's my comment um, uh, on that topic. So. Um, Maybe so, if I can just add to that as well, is that we're specifically targeting dormant zombie funds, like retail funds will never be touched in, in what we're proposing. Um, do you know, I guess people are worried that their wallets might go missing or whatever, like it's specifically zombie uh, dormant funds that either the multi owners are gone or the protocols are defunct. It's, it's not, it, it'll never be the case that retail wallets will be targeted. No, thanks for that uh, red line. But we've, we're not just burning the USD seat, though. We are giving them like a lot of opportunity to, you know, we're contacting them. We're giving them saying, you know, can have a month. If they still don't get back to us, then we can't just keep waiting. We have to take action. Um, so I agree with you, Alex, here. Uh, I don't know what precedence it sets, though, because, again, like you mentioned in cryptocurrency, um, realigning blockchain and going back that, that could set a precedence for future dormant funds. 
Um, so what's your thoughts on that? The worries, what could, you know, the precedence it could set? Well, look, I think in, in the real world, when you have, if you have a company like Lehman Brothers or General Motors or whatever, and it, and it defaults on its debt and it goes bankrupt, you have, um, like, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, there were, you know, people would say, people maybe would say things like, well, that's your debt. And, you know, you have to, you have to work the next 40 years of your life or whatever to pay off your debt. And in the real world today, um, uh, nobody does that. And because, you know, nobody, nobody believes in slavery anymore. So, uh, and so nobody, nobody uh, can justify making someone else a slave to a debt, um, especially when, when it wasn't, when they weren't the ones that incurred the debt in the first place. And so the free market has evolved, uh, you know, debt, rest a debt restructuring system where the state, uh, the, the fiat state uh, machine, if you will, like, like the history uh, of the, the the shared responsibilities of the debt are, are rewritten. Like a bunch of the debt is voided because the debt holders, they want to be able to incentivize some people to like come back to the general motors or whatever and work for the company and rebuild what can be rebuilt. And, uh, um, you know, so that everybody is better off. Right. And so in any normal debt restructuring process, um, you, you have a big amount, a big chunk of the debt is just is voided. And, and that's what has to happen here. So I think, um, I think it's, it's not a, it's not a pragmatic or realistic attitude to take ultimately to say that, you know, the state is sacred and we can't, we can't touch this. I think if we, if we, you know, chronicle why we did what we did and explain why we did what we did, I think to anyone who understands, um, you know, uh, finance and markets at all, it makes perfect sense. Right. Um, I, I think, I think that's that's basically what I would say to that objection. Somebody, cool. yeah, you're muted. So. so yeah, sorry, sorry, I was on, I was on mute. So you mentioned the legal implications for why the Ozen Protocol might not want to speak to us um, and just not respond. What's the legal implications for us to burn it? Um, you know, I know we're doing it through governments, but could could. So, so there's none. This is a common misconception. I mean, uh, in any blockchain, uh, any blockchain, uh, any blockchain's consensus uh, n consensus uh, network is the supreme authority by definition for anything that happens on that blockchain. So, and when you when you buy into any blockchain, you you are buying into you're buying into that system. It's like if you came to the United States and and the and an election happened and some laws were changed and and you said, well, uh, I don't agree with the outcome of the election. It's like it doesn't. It's like well, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. Like you, you know, um, the election is something you bought into when you showed up, right? And it's the same. It's the same with um, you know blockchain consensus. So, but but. Um, but even uh, aside from that, right, the, the ozone wallet was actually a holder of 1 billion USTC uh, uh, from the community pool. And they are just they're just kind of like uh, cu custodians of community assets. Right. So. So this is the community's money. This isn't Ozone's money. This isn't a bunch of people who deposited money into Ozone's money. This isn't, so this is, um, there is literally no issue. Like we're just reclaiming what is ours in the first place, right? So, so there's literally no, uh, no legal issue with this whatsoever. So I, like anybody who says that, like, oh, this is really legally complicated. We have to get lawyers. Like, no, it's complete. It's extremely simple. And there is no legal case for anyone. You know, it's Amer in America, I guess you can sue anybody for, for, uh, for eating a ham sandwich if you want. But, like, but you're not going to win. Like, there, there is literally no legal case here for uh, anything other than what governance decides to do with these funds. Okay, um, I think I've, I'm just playing the devil's advocate here because I think people that follow me knows I'm all for the burn. But some of the questions that's been sent to me, I'm I'm trying to um, ask them. So I think this my question might be from Rexy's alt account, but he's someone for well, two questions has sure. been sent saying that we didn't enroll it back for Terraport. 
why we're doing it. And I think you've already answered it to say that this is the power. Yeah, but I'll, but it's it's still a fair question that I think um, other people need to, should hear the answer for. So, um, so Terra and Terra, so so we um, you know this idea that state is sacred is an important blockchain principle, right? And if you're going to sacrifice that idea, um, you better have a really 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 good reason to do it. Uh, or you're going to lose. You're going to completely lose your credibility with uh, with anyone else who, who anyone else who's like interested in in using blockchains and you know potentially interested in like buying your token and participating on your network. So um, so now uh, Terra Terra was uh, another token that uh, that Rexy started, and it was um, it was an investment in a in a dex that he was going to make, but like. Uh, it was a pri- that's a private asset, right? That um, that he uh, you know he and his builders and 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 if, and some investors and whatever um, owned. It was not a community. It was not a public good, right? USTC is the public good of of our chain, right? Or I mean, it's it's like um, it's extremely central to. Lunk's history to its identity to um, to why we are where we are today. Uh, you know, it's a public good. So so that um, if you're so it's it's a much um, it's a much much bigger ask to say, oh, you know, we have this private enterprise over here that we screwed up. Now, can you rewrite the whole community's rules to save our to save ourselves from our private screw up as opposed to rewrite the rules to um to rebuild the define the public good that like defines the whole chain makes sense yeah it makes sense to me um lunatic or faffy i don't know if you've got any opinion on that yes uh i do (laughs) no uh it's uh I think it's pretty much uh, Alex's opinion, like uh, completely agree with him, completely super relevant. And I just want to insist again, Terraport, I come up with my guys. We have like a private token, a private company, a private enterprise. We do something. It doesn't work out because we get hacked or because we didn't uh, do the right thing or for whatever reason, because our pools got drained. It's a very sad an unfortunate event, but it's an event which doesn't concern the blockchain, nor does it concern the link or the USTC holders. This is the problem of Terraport. It's for them to deal with it. Either go after the guys or sue them or find the money one way or, or, or the other or whatever, and then deal with their holders. This has nothing to do with link and USTC. Okay. okay. And one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say one other thing, um, and uh, this isn't directly. I guess this isn't directly related to the to the logic of the argument. But um, as far as I know, like we still don't have like a full public accounting of of what happened there, right? Um, yeah. Like that was never even shared, right? So right. so like the absolute and i like i like rexies i've i've had a, i had i think i had a really positive uh relationship with him historically and a um uh you know it was very sad what happened and i i felt really bad for him but when something like this happens like the this the sort of industry standard good guy thing to do is to drop every um every pretense of uh of you know like like the only thing that matters for you and your credibility is an absolutely complete accounting of everything you know that happened and and if if you have to wait a few days or a couple weeks for law law enforcement to do certain things then that's fine but we're now how many what like six months later and like like nobody knows what happened there and 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 to then turn around and say oh you got you know you're you're um you're rewriting some state uh you're rewriting the, uh, you're altering the state machine to save this public good why don't you do that for me too like uh i think that's um that's another like really big inconsistency here um it, like if if he wants to 
if for there to be any discussion about you know you know altering a state machine uh, on behalf of a private enterprise, there has to be an absolutely complete uh, public accounting of what happened, no matter how embarrassing or humiliating it is to him. That, that is um, that's an absolute prerequisite, and as far as I know, that never happened. All right. So yeah, that was a long one, but uh, yeah. So back to it. Uh, exactly. So that's a private event. That's not uh, the business of the LUNC or USTC holders, right? That's very unfortunate what happened, etc. what just uh, Alex said at all. And that's not our problem, or at least that's not the problem of uh, LUNC governance, right? Here, that's different. And that's, again, I say it again, these were assets which basically originated from the blockchain, from the community pool had a specific purpose, which was to basically defend or protect USTC PEG. Sadly, lots of unexpected events have happened. Today, we don't have the same people around. We don't, I mean, you know, obviously the management is not here. Uh, people are not around, etc. The blockchain, there is still, um, and that's a great thing. It's still like driven by governance. You have a token which is called LUNC, which is the governance token, which gives you a right to vote and decide on the future of the blockchain. And here's the idea or the intent is to reclaim what we believe belongs to us as a community or as a blockchain. So that's the idea. Now, of course, ideally, in an ideal world, uh, you know, a tweet or receive a DM or a message by Ozone or the current owner or custodian of the wallet. They tell us, hey guys, we're happy to burn it. They send it to the burn address and we're all super happy and everything is super smooth. That's one thing. Now, what if they just don't reply at all because they have moved on, because they're busy with other things or for whatever reason, which have been said already just before. Uh, what do we do? Do we just say, oh, they don't reply, they don't answer, so do nothing well that's actually the question or the point that we're raising that's a very specific point and it's very like it's not something people saying yeah you can't to like you can't rewrite the state of the blockchain immutability yes i completely agree on the other hand this is not bitcoin this is proof of stake this is a bit different right so uh, for example during the crash uh, validators agreed to halt and to stop the blockchain. You shouldn't do that normally, but this was an extreme case and they had to act so to avoid to get bigger losses. Here is another extreme case or extreme scenario that has been raised, uh, which is basically these tokens or these assets are somewhere, we don't really know where, and no one is actually uh, replying. So what do we do? We feel like going for governance in order to destroy these assets. Again, we're not asking to get a share of it for us, for the USDC team, for like whatever. We're just saying these assets today, they're irrelevant. And we just want to make sure that this is written in the chain, but they are not uh, uh, in circulation and irrelevant. That's the idea behind it. No, thanks for that, Fafi. So I've got a couple more questions and then we'll open uh, to the audience. If you've got any questions, request to speak or DM me. I'll check my DMs after this. Um, so Alex, would your preference, or and Fafi, would your preference had been if Ozone a Protocol got back to you and they sent the money to the burn address themselves rather than having to, you know, alter the blockchain? Yeah, I mean, that, like, I, I guess, so, for, so yes, that would be the that'd be the right thing to do assuming the assuming governance had 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 um had told them to do that um but i'll also say that i i am basically certain that um that kind of like other other deposits that we'll have to deal with at right after this um uh there's 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 not really the people, the people charged with um, making that decision, either either they don't, they're not involved at all with them anymore, or they're like unable. Even if they wanted to help, they're sort of unable to for their own legal reasons. So, um, so we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to like rewrite state no matter what, and and so I guess it's. Um, we might as well uh, we, we might as well have that conversation now. Um, but but like yeah, it's 
all, all, all other things equal, you want, you want to follow kind of the normal process that your chain set up to, 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 to execute things. Um, so the, nor- the way that the normal civilized process would work is if Ozone sent 1 billion, not 800 million, 1 billion USTC back to the community pool. Uh, they only have 800 million now. And that's, um, um, we don't really know, uh, we're not really sure what happened to the other 200 million. Um, cause that's, com- you know, but anyway, um, so yeah, the, the logical outcome would be that they send a billion USTC, uh, to the, to the burn wallet or to the burn address. Okay. No, no, thanks for that. I suppose there's lots of other, um, the, um, USTC dormant USTC that we could potentially not go attack, but we could take the same approach, give them the opportunity to send it to the burn address themselves. If not, then we can um, take this approach of altering the yeah. blockchain. Yeah, just a quick one to add on top of it, uh, Rocco. On my end, I would much rather not have to focus on this. And ideally, they come up, they send back the USTCs to the burn wallet, etc. This creates lots of work because we need to go. Like it, it, it does take lots of time away, uh, you know, having to put some proposal, then you have to campaign for it. We have to be on Twitter. We have to lobby with validators, with people. It, it's a lot of work to explain it in very layman hands so people actually understand what the implications or consequences. So I personally would rather not have to do this. And, you know, when you do development, so currently we're working, we're super busy with, um, which I guess we'll touch base on uh, just after with the proposal testing. So it means that we have to shift away from this, do something else, talk to people, etc. And then it's always hard to go back to the technical work. So I would have, I would have prefer not to have to deal no, with that, it. No, that's, that's fine, it, Safi. I'll just know. ask this final one and then we'll move on to uh, the Red Line's initial proposal of like the buyback divergence. I was going to ask questions about that as well. Uh, it's about the Binance as well. So Binance holds a lot of USTC as well from you know the pre-crash. So, you know, could that be classed as dormant um, as well? No, that, no. That is, um, that's people who, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if, if some percentage of that is like TFL USTC or something, then are, you could make that argument. Although we want to, um, we we're fans of, of what TFL has done, uh, for, um, for the chain. And we want to, we want to maintain a very constructive relationship with TFL. Um, but, uh, but no, like the, the Binance is just holding USTC in custody for, um, you know, spot and fu- and uh, uh, and futures traders of U.S. I guess I guess it's really just spot. Um, uh, but but that's those are people those are people who who own it today and who who have an interest in it today and who participate in the community today. So those are the people we don't we don't want to like we we don't want to like pick the pockets of people who who are like active parts of the community today. Okay. Yep. That that's fair enough. Um. So, so the, suppose the next question is for Redline. I know we've been focusing a lot on the eight hundred mil USDC. Um. How are you progressing on your testing of your initial proposal of the buyback divergence, the protocol fees, and all that stuff? Um. We seem to be going well. We've kind of got an initial model and report done there now. So we've kind of got. We're, we're, we've got first strategy done, say, where we'd be collecting USTC from the divergence tax, and we have started doing buybacks as well. Um, so the initial results look okay, but we still have to do model many different kind of strategies to kind of get a more thorough idea of where we're going with it. But so far, it looks really good and really promising. And is there an update coming up? I suppose you guys spoke about releasing a white paper as well and what your recommendations are going to be to the community. Yeah, the white paper is more of a broader thing that would expand much further than than the, than my divergence protocol. That would be like a, a roadmap for the chain, say, more so, or, or for USTC and Terra Stables, rather than specifically the divergence protocol. And I suppose at the end of the day, the divergence protocol and buybacks, it's just a small piece of what we're trying to build here. It's just a mechanism 
to to defend the peg automatically that we don't have to rely on LFG or anything like that and something that's going to be strong uh, to know that so even if, if there is a D peg like it's going to retain the money or the collateral in in our blockchain it won't so uh, it went like so when another coin D pegs like if people pull liquidity out it's gone that's it whereas because of the way the divergence tax works, if there's a major DPEG, the protocol will claw back most of that liquidity and retain it in our blockchain, yeah. basically. Yeah, just to add on that, uh, I've put in the nest uh, a link. That's the latest version of the report that we've been working on. So if people are following uh, or to help people following in the space, please open it. If you don't see charts, try to hit F5. I mean, it might not work uh, perfectly on mobile, but it works on the computer. But uh, open it so you can take a look and it will help you follow through what we're talking about. Cool. Thanks for that, uh, Fafian Redline. Any questions from you, Lunatic? You've been fairly quiet there. No, mate. No, mate. Uh, I just brought up um, Happy Catty because I thought you guys want to start the questioning soon. Um, hi, hey. Hi, Happy. Uh, hi, Quant. Uh, I, I just said nothing because it was nice to follow and stuff. Uh, Rock always does great hosting, you know, so I just shut my mouth at, mouth and listen rather than saying a lot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, uh, before we move on to, uh, to Happy and, and the other question, just to add a, a, another layer, as I like to do, as I love to do, uh, regarding the report. So where we are at now, for example, if you look at the report that we have in the nest, right? things that we're doing, what are we actually doing? So we've implemented the proposal by Redline. It's great. And now we're actually tweaking it to get the most out of it. For example, if you look at the report, you can see that sometimes the, ta the divergence tax goes all the way to 100%. This is not right. Like no one in his right mind will actually uh, make a trade, so sell uh, USTC and get tax 100% of what he's getting back and still go ahead. These trades has, have to be cancelled. All right. So if a trade is pushing basically the way it works, or think about it very simply. When you make a trade, when you sell, you're going to push. If you sell USTC, you're pushing the price of USTC down. All right. And when you push it under the peg, will tax you. Prevent you from doing so or to basically uh, getting a share of it. So there are two cases. If you're arbing the pool, you're still going to make uh, and you're getting tax and you're still making a profit. You don't care. It is free money because you are being the pool or it works the same against the sex or whatever you want. So if you're making an arb and you're actually profiting from it, even though you're getting taxed, that's fine. We let you go through and we take that into account. If you're actually trading yourself, you're shorting. There are some cases where we should cancel the trade because it doesn't make sense from like an investor or trading perspective and some other cases where we're going to let the trade go through and tax you and collect some of this money. All right. So that's what we need to tweak here. How do we apply this rule? And then when we tax you, we collect some cash it goes into a reserve account. Some of it is going to be shared to the exchanges, the sex. Some of it is going to be, is going to be kept so that we can buy back and help push the price of uh, USDC back up. That's the idea. That's what you're seeing in the chart. So currently, you can see that the reserve, I think, goes all the way up to $20 million. That's too much. That means we're being too enthusiastic. All right? We're being too positive about our simulation and our scenario. So we need to make our scenario or simulation a bit worse so that we can get like something like, you know, when things happen in reality, they often tend to be worse than better. So we need to take that, in, that into account. The other thing is that this also raises uh, some very interesting points that we're also working on. So, for example, what I just said now, you've collected some cash. It's in a reserve account. You're going to use this cash to buy USTC back to push the price up. But then you're going to end up with some USTC in your reserve. So you've given some USD, USDT or BUSD. You've given some USD away. You've gained You've pushed the price up. You've gained back some uh, USTC. So what do we do? If tomorrow we have to buy back again, it means we have to sell USTC to 
get USD and go buy back. This is stupid because if you need to buy back, you certainly don't want to start selling USDC on top of it. So doing it this way or doing these things allows to raise very interesting question. And for example, you know how uh, Redline planned to give some of this cash back to the partners, the sex, etc., uh, for them to support us. Well, that clearly tells you that we should, like the best trade for us is to actually try and give them USTC in instead of USD. All right, so that's what we're going to be pushing for in our proposal. And that's why it's a very iterative process. As we do simulation, we go through what we're doing. We start asking ourselves some very interesting questions. So we said that we were going to tax the traders and that we're going to uh, share some of this tax with the sex. We didn't say the currency in which we are going to pay. So now we'll try to push to basically give them some USTC or use that as collateral or do some interesting things with it. But at least now we have all the tools to try and play different scenarios, different uh, version of the same thing and see what works best for us and what is the most realistic. Okay, thanks for that, Fafi. Um, I think we'll move on to some questions. We'll bring on Happy Catty Crypto and then we'll take a few questions after that. So if you want to ask questions, uh, do request to speak. Um, Happy, do you want to go ahead? Thanks for bringing me up, Rothko. Um, I just... Um, can you guys hear Happy or is it just me? No, I just heard him say hello and then nothing after that. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah you're about ahead, yeah. Um, Sorry about that. I've got so many different feeds going on. Um, I just want to say to the quant team, what a great job you're doing. You're oh, cut, cut, cut out again, but 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 uh, thanks for the compliment. What you cut out right at the end of the compliment. There. Yeah, should we give Happy another go before you move on? <laughs> Please. I don't yes, know why. Yes. I don't know why it keeps muting itself. I've, I'm literally watching it mute itself on the screen, so I'll, I'll try keep clicking it back. Up. It gets muted again. Um, so I've got four questions. I'll ask them quick because either I'm being someone's muting me. Um, so how do you intend to patch the mass leakage of USTC from the Oracle Rewards pool? Is this not filling a bucket? loads of holes in it i can take this one so that's a fair point so i guess uh you were cutting i'm gonna repeat your question and just interrupt me if i got this uh, wrong uh hcc so hcc is saying at the moment we're giving away some USTCs which are sitting in the oracle pool right so we give them away and they go back to circulation and they're getting sold to the market we do not want that absolutely true absolutely a fair point he said that if we do what we're doing now and we leave this situation ongoing, it's as if we are filling a bucket with holes. You're right. Uh, that something needs to be dealt with. We just can't be doing everything at the same time, HEC. All right. So one thing, you have several options. You can just take them and burn them. Perhaps, like, we need to see once we start talking a bit more with, uh, with exchanges, is there any chance we can take the, those and... Uh, like, you know, collateralize them or, or so we put them as collat and get some USDT or some BUSD to actually start um, uh, collateralizing USTC. There are many things that we could do. It's kind of, you have to see it, it's like it's related to USTC, but it's, an, it's not, basically it can be dealt uh, in parallel or separately. All right, so you have one element, one piece of the layer, which is like having this mechanism to hold the peg. And you have another part of the problem, which is like, how do we start leaking this USTC? And both can be dealt as uh, independent pieces. And once we have a solution for each, we put them back together, if that makes sense. That makes total sense. So my second question would be, you know, will retail simply not be angry, right? If we look at all of the, the pre-crash USTC, which is quite a lot of it, right? That's where it's been since the crash. So a lot of it is going to be deemed a zombie. Binance are one of those people that hold wallets with a lot of zombie USTC in it. If we're going to, for example, introduce this blockchain state, right? We burn risk harbors funds, but we don't burn Binance's. Does that not become highly questionable? Is this realistically, it, it's 
it's the same thing, but we're, we're kind of just picking and choosing who we're going to do it to so we don't upset the big players. Is, no, there, well, is there not any difference? Well, no, because uh, the Ozon uh, wallet belongs to us, uh, HCC. Binance, whatever they own, it's theirs, right? So first, we need to make a clear difference here. Whatever uh, there are assets that belong to us, assets that don't belong to us. That's one thing, all right? So that's very important to draw this distinction, and that's what makes it very different uh, problems, in my opinion. In one case, you have Binance have gone, uh, or they have their old uh, tokens. Uh, they haven't touched them. We can call them dormant, but it's theirs, right? And on the other hand, we have um, uh, ozone, that's or assets. At least that's the question that we're posing here. Who do they belong to? And if it's ours, what can we do? So that's one thing. Second thing is that I guess you're referring to, we've had a discussion, Alex has aired the idea that we could go after uh, dormant assets. That's another thing, right? One thing I would say to start with in this, we're not there yet. We still need to discuss further about that. However, you also have to see it as a mean, as a very clever way to actually reach out and discuss with these people. We don't have their email address. We don't know where to go, right? People, they have moved on. So there were some people, they even, they don't even follow up no more. For them, Luna Classic is dead. It has crashed. It has gone down. It, it was closed. The governance was closed. They have been airdropped some Luna too. They're happy with their Luna 2. They have moved on and they're super happy and they might not even have the keys to their wallet with USTC, right? So it really is like, it's not, they don't even know what's going on. They're not here on the space. They don't even know that we're around, okay? So how do we reach out to them, HCC? I don't know these guys. I don't know them at all. What I can do is I can put a tweet uh, uh, out and try to, and hope for the best, okay? Blockchain, what we can do is we say, hey, we're going to start burning this asset or we start kind of signaling this kind of things. And then you may actually start having people coming back to you and talking to you or people telling you, yes, I don't care, but you have to consider it's a process. So the ozone wallet is one thing now. And by the way, we didn't want to, to get started with this now. We have been rushed uh, by some guys who have been putting some proposal, etc. That's a process something we need to discuss, but there is also a side to it whereby we wish to get in touch with people to kind of, you know, uh, reach out to them and let them know what we're doing and if they can contribute or whatever, yeah? And we don't know where to start because we don't have the contacts or, you know, we don't know who they are, etc. And this, at the very least, seems to be like a way to get them to the table to start talking. But it's a process. It takes time and it requires to, you know, to be patient and, you know, to to do all the necessary steps for it and all. Oh, definitely. I 100% agree in this taking this patient step, this real collective step. That's why I'm kind of like questioning this block changing state sort of situation. So uh, my third question, just before I get to my fourth one, which is my final one, is simply, you know, if you were a retail consumer, that had consumed USTC, right? And then all of a sudden you've left your wallets, you've not thought about them. And then you find out from some old lady in the shop, hey, they repegged USTC. And then you go back as a retail investor to check your wallets to find out oh, all of your funding's gone. I mean, is that not going to become questionable? Uh, obviously you're, you're saying people aren't going to be that upset because you know it's worthless right now, but what when we about when we actually repeg the thing and it's, it's worth a dollar a coin all of a sudden that, becomes very questionable, doesn't it? Because those retail investors are the ones that have been initially burnt, right? Yeah. Well, one of the things that, yeah. Oh yeah, well, one of the things we could do is we could set the, like, we could say that it would be wallets above a certain value, do you know, so that would exclude retail wallets. Do you know what I mean? The majority of the wallets we're targeting are, are, are have, do you know, like a huge percentage of the supply sitting inside them. They're not retail wallets we're targeting or, or exchange wallets, do you know, their defunct protocol wallets we're basically targeting at the end of the day. Yes. The other thing is that, so basically what um, uh, Redline is saying is on one hand, you have like uh, the, the kind of wallet that you kind of know that they have been abandoned. And then you have the retail wallet. One solution that has been proposed as well is that's why I say it's a process. It takes time and we're working on it slowly, slowly. So the other thing is that you can say, hey, I'm go we're going to do it, but we're going to do only 5% at a time. So you're going to burn 5%. So as it goes up, like, you know, it gives time for people like, 
maybe they've been hit like over two or three months. Let's say three months, you've lost 15% of your wallet that we have burned without asking you and that's terrible and all. On the other hand, by doing so, we have brought like 30% uh, added value to your wallet too. So now you realize, you see it and you start getting in touch. So again, it's like, it doesn't have to be done at once, can be done slowly. And we can imagine a mechanism such as the one we've just described here to try and kind of go slowly and easy, but also make it in a way that people are going to reach out or that, uh, you know, we start creating this contact so we can talk and we can progress further. Okay, my fourth and final question is, is there really a difference if we simplify and bastardize this situation? Is there really a difference between seizing Terraport assets and seizing retail zombie USTC? Massive. We spoke about it before, actually. It's a massive, you can't even compare, I should say. So, you know, people who say, like, you shouldn't, uh, the state of the blockchain is immutable. You shouldn't do that. Big no-no. Listen, last year, we have halted the chain. This is a big no-no. You can't do that in Bitcoin. If you halt the chain in Bitcoin, I take, uh, like, uh, I can, just with another peer, we can spin the chain again, right? So it doesn't happen. Like, whatever, like, these things come from, like, it's di you can't exactly compare like the two. We agree that we shouldn't do that. It's, it's bad, but in certain cases, and that's actually one of the added features that blockchain has gained with Cosmos and with, uh, if with our blockchain is like governance, all right? On-chain governance, which means that it's not just mechanic and it's not just consensus between like the nodes. You also have a human dimension to it. With a governance token, but you can actually vote. In, in, in Bitcoin, you don't have governance. It's money talk, all right? You want to do something, you buy electricity. Electricity, you direct to mine, and the bigger mining power you have, the, mi the bigger power you have, and you decide. That's money talk. There is no like, oh, I think I'm going to make a governance uh, spend proposal. I think I'm, there is no that. It doesn't exist. We don't want it. It, it just doesn't have its place there, all right? Now, when you move to uh, for stake, and to the Cosmos blockchain, you have a nice feature which is called on-chain governance, which actually allow for people who hold the, uh, the governance token to actually govern. And that's one of the few, especially in our case, we'll see it and frankly, it's very nice. Over tokens, over blockchains have governance tokens. Usually it's just a way to not make it a security token. So they really are raising funds. There is like a team behind or a private company which is going to be deciding everything anyway. But they call their token a governance token so that they don't get uh, hit by the SEC, etc. In our case, you can truly go and put some uh, governance proposal forward and actually get to govern. And in this case, we said it before, you can really listen to the space. Terraport is a private company, nothing to do with us, not even our business. We don't care. We are lunch and obviously USTC, governance uh, committee as, as, as a blockchain, as a community, every one of us, basically anyone who holds the lunch uh, token. And what happened to this, to this asset which belong to us is our business. We get to decide about them. So either the current, their custodian, they're not the owner. That's not the same thing. Custodian means that you have something in your possession, but you're keeping it safe for others. As opposed to, I have this in my possession and it belongs to me. All right. There is like a, there is a nuance. There is a difference here, but it's not the same thing. So if the custodian are kind of ignoring us, what do we do? They still hold our assets. Right, and if you go back to Terraport, Terraport asset is Terraport asset is not even my business. I don't even care. Voilà. You might need to bring him up again. I think he disconnected there at one point. Let me invite him back up. Uh, he's still here. I've sent him an invite. We do care what happened to Terraport, by the way. We do like feel bad for it and you know, feel bad for that team. But but it's um, it's a very different kind of request when you're saying um, you know sacrifice a public good for a private asset as opposed to sacrifice a public good for like the defining asset. Yeah, the defining for community asset. Uh, thanks for precising, Alex. Um. I don't know where Happy is. Um, Henry, do you want to go ahead and ask your question?
Henry Henry I think Henry <laughs> Henry might be French Okay and boss be waiting for other people to ask question and Faffy Redline Alex is there anything else you wanted to share I know I've been asking and other people have been asking you questions is there anything in particular that you wanted to share with us I've been, I'm okay. Okay. I've been talking a lot to be honest. Um <laughs> no no it's just that um I guess we're just uh like tweaking a bit more like the the algo that we're working on uh so that we can actually uh get something we're happy with to share with the exchanges and all. That's one thing. The second thing is that actually I'm pretty uh like like the algo is pretty cool actually i think we can do some interesting things mm -hmm. especially um, especially around um if we can um, basically if we can um, like not tax exactly like at the peg but if we can tax like say if the peg is like one dollar if we can tax under 90 cents and above one dollar ten it could start to be like a bit more interesting and you have a bit more variant to do so we do have some very nice features to try uh, it's been encouraging so far and we're getting in a place where we can do that which is super cool okay uh, the question i was just checking the dms like all the questions about the usdc burn because i think that is um not a priority but it just it just drags all the i know you wanted to speak about the other protocol and the algo stuff that you're building but i think people and, and probably including myself with quite folks and the the 800 mil usdc burn and um, candace and colo have got questions and then we can start rounding up the spaces and um, candace do you want to go ahead hello thank you for um picking me to go first uh, i have a question for uh, the quant team so i was looking at the um you know, I'll go back test the thing, and my uh, I caught the attention on the reserve. It's uh, in BUSD. Is it just for this specific like um, example, or are you guys planning on you know building up the reserve in BUSD? And if it's the case, you know, with the current scrutiny that Binance is under, um, what let's say, what if you know something happens to BUSD, and then our reserve that's built in BUSD to pretty much buy back USTC. Um, how do we mitigate, you know, that kind of exposure? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, go, go ahead. Well, the thing is, yeah, yeah. Be, the, the, the merge yeah. attacks will be on all trading pairs. So it wouldn't be just be USD, you be accumulating. It would be USDT or any other state, TUSD or any other trading pair against that's against USTC, basically. So you would actually have a, a basket of stables. To the vendor back. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That makes sense. Or at the very least, uh, at the very least, that's something we need to think. Is there like, uh, is there again? It's always the same question. Is there like, uh, do we have an advantage of choosing? Like, do we just uh, apply it to all the the the, the pairs that trades and, and 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 we end up with a basket as uh, Redline said, or do we do we see that for example is better like or for the question that you just said, the point that you just raised is risky to go all in BSD. Or if we want actually support of Binance and we have something to earn by going full on BUSD, you know, um, we need to... So the the, easy answer, the direct answer is what um, uh, Redline told you, which is basically we end up with a basket of uh, stables by uh, trading pairs. But then... Can we actually benefit from it? And that's why we have a tool to try and to see what's the best uh, situation or solution for us. And then we need to try to convince people that we, w we can actually get what we want. Thank you. Thank you. Makes sense. Thanks, Candice. Uh, Colo, Colo Rot, do you want to go ahead next? Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, hello. Uh, just wondering, after the 800 million USDC are burned, uh, are you guys planning to target any other wallets? Uh, similar yep. to that one. Yep. Okay, thanks for answering. Uh, I love Alex's bullishness to start burning yeah. as much USDC <laughs> as possible. <laughs> I guess what what he meant is that there are, we think there are like uh, Alex well would be the best person to talk about it again, uh, or maybe you can have a quick go at it, Alex. But uh, 
basically we have like there are over wallets in a similar situation and we'd like to target all over wallets that are in the similar situation yeah and i think if people are worried about retail wallets being targeted in this like it's very easy for us to set a minimum minimum value you know, so that only these large wallets are targeted in this. It's, it's very easy to exclude the retail wallets if people are afraid that, that they're going to be targeted. I hope that answers your question, uh, um, Colorette. Uh, Candice? Uh, yes, 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 it does. Thanks. No worries. Um, Candice, do you want to go ahead again? And then we'll start rounding up. All right. Thank you. Um, so I have one more last question. So um, lately I've been tracking... Uh, a lot of uh, pools on TerraSwap and there is a lot of decommissioned coins that have uh, pools that do hold significant amounts of USTC trapped in it. Um, is there maybe any plans to also um, do something about that? I have personally tracked at least 100 million that's stuck in different pools and it's decommissioned so you can't get the tokens anywhere so it's literally just stuck there forever. But, you know, but thank you. Thank you, Capitan. That's a great point. So that's what Alex is actually looking for. And that's when people say like, oh, you're doing nothing. Like we're not paying you to do that. You, it takes lots of time to make an inventory of all these things. People think that all the USTC are sitting in someone's wallet who is looking at the chart on a daily or hourly minute to see if it goes up. It's not. People were here before. They are doing things, and then the crash happened. Some got super upset, some whatever. They got, they received an airdrop in Luna to make up for their loss, and they moved on. And that's it. And they can't be bothered. But they have for, they, they just moved on. They, they, like you know, you also have the case whereby like some like protocols have been given USTC to market make. So they didn't buy them in the first place. They've been given to provide liquidity in markets. And then like things haven't worked out. They have moved on. It happens a lot actually in crypto, you know? And, and, and so we need to distinguish like you've got all this, like people are super focused again on people's property, this and that. That's a good debate to have. That's very healthy. It means that you have good ethics and value and that's great. But the reality is not this. It's not as simple as that. You have lots of wallets, which are basically, or, or tokens, which are which can be called or labeled as zombie. Right now, tomorrow, this USTC is worth $10. Yes, of course, people will certainly come back because like just like you, you find dust. You find Bitcoin dust in a wallet that you had like from 2017 or whatever it happens, right? So, oh, cool. This thing has gone uh, gone back up. So happy, boom, I'm going to sell. All right. And so that's why what we're trying to do here is prevent this situation from happening and trying to be proactive. And, and either we burn them because, like, you know, they've been uh, left over and you know, people have given up or in doing or in the process of doing so, encouraging people to actually reach out so that we can actually talk and find a solution. The last thing you want is that once we actually like work for one year or two years or whatever, and we get to where we want to be and, and, you know, we've done all the job right. And then you have like 9 billion of USTCs, which get dumped on you only to literally ring all your efforts. That's not cool. And we can't just pretend it doesn't exist. It will happen if we do nothing about it. Okay, hope that answers your question, Candice. Um, how are you guys doing for time? Should we take a couple more questions or do you want to start rounding up? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, cool. Um, how am I? I think you are next. How am I? Okay, um, we'll move on to the next one. East. Menlo, I love pronouncing these names. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I'm from East Menlo Park, California, basically, and that is my name on here. But I definitely would like to hear from a Happy Catty Crypto. That is my guy. I support him deeply, and I think he's well thoughtful on the matter from all ranges of this game here. So um, I like to listen to Happy Catty if you don't mind speaking and. You know, and some input as well. That's it. 
I think I, I, I've DM'd him to ask if his connection is back up because um, he did ask ask all his questions and then um, we sort of lost him. But no, I like Happy as well. I, 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 maybe I'll reach out to him about his comments on the Lunar Classic community on Wallet. I think that's quite an important topic. So yeah, maybe we can speak to him again after this. A um, couple more questions um, that I've got is... Um, there's been a few proposals that's gone up. So there's, I think, one eleven six five eight, which says something similar to your proposal, the quantum proposal. So what are the next steps? Do we have to just wait for your proposal to pass? And then we do we have to make another proposal to alter the blockchain? Or does that give us the green light? So if so, if things go well, what would be the sort of next plan of action? Um, well, I suppose on, on this risk harbour in the next, before our proposal passes, the deposit fund in the community pool and we burn it, I suppose the next step would be to look at making a state change. I don't know if the other guys want to speak on that. Alex, did you want to say something or are you on mute? Oh, sorry. Can you, uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah. So my question was: There's few proposals that's gone up. I think there's a proposal which says something similar to your guys' proposal. Um, I think it was eleven six five eight, which said send it to community pool and burn, and um, that passed. I think your proposal that you put up, I think it was eleven six seven five, that's not passed yet. So for the eight hundred million, uh, what are the next steps? Uh, do we have to wait for your proposal to pass? And if so, do we start altering the blockchain, or there's going to be new? proposal to come up so um the the proposer of um 11675 the one to just burn it i think that i think um the the validator i think put that up as a um as sort of like an immediate response to vegas like, like kind of like um like they wanted i, I think they're uh I, I, we'd have to talk to them. I mean, I think, I guess, I guess the, 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 the I guess if, the, if, um, let's say their proposal passes and, and, and then our proposal passes, I mean, I, th I think, I think the mandate is very clear that, um, uh, I mean, like, so, uh, well, I don't think that I think our proposal is the the only one that um, all the other proposals are like we're asking you to send the money back and then we want to do something to the community pool and then we want to do something with it right or we're at, or we're asking you to send it back to the community pool you know right and and um, for us it's very very important that that this USTC get burnt to defend the value of the remaining USTC so and we think that once this this money arrives in the pool for whatever reason, then um, um, certain people, you know, some of them have already made it pretty clear that, you know, they like burning in theory, but in practice, they have all kinds of ideas about how to how to spend this money uh, and dump it on the market and pretty much rug pull our work. So like, like, I guess, but I guess the if um, so the, the question is, if, uh, if, that proposal to send it to the community pool and then burn it passes, and then our our proposal passes. I think, um, um, I, I would think at that point the state would be re you 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 know as the as the L one TF and the validators would kind of make sense of these two um, not perfectly identical proposals that kind of are pushing in the same direction. I guess what they would do is they'd say, okay, you know the. Um, will rewrite the state to send the funds to the community pool and then and then in the in the patch we would then send the funds from the community pool to the burn address i guess um i i, I mean there'd have to be some kind of like intellectually honest reconciliation but i guess it would all it would end up in the same place um which would be either the USCC is erased from the state which is the same as burning or like the state is altered so that the funds are like written to the community pool and then burnt, I guess. I mean, either way though, you, you any way this works, like you, you have to, um, you have to rewrite the state. So, um, but I guess, I guess if, if six, seven, five passed and, and then our proposal didn't pass, I guess the, 
the verdict would be that the committee wants to send the funds to the burn address and is asking them nicely to send it to the burn address, but the committee has not yet agreed to alter the state of the chain to to repossess the funds. Yeah, that makes sense. But, so your proposal is I mean, it's a similar proposal, but the, your proposal talks about how to actually get it done as well. And I'm assuming to alter right. the blockchain, uh, it's the L1 team, they'll they'll do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Our proposal is the only one that's not a request because it's yeah. it's just um, it's our money, it's our assets, and so um, it's not. There's no requesting to be done. It's they are the custodian of community assets, and we're telling them that. And we told them, you know, after trying to reach out to them, we call them out in public and reach out to them privately. Um, you know, we'd lo- you know, it'd be great if they just did this on their own, but um, but there's no reason to think that that they will, even though they are the custodian of they're they're custodying these assets on the community's behalf, and they should be doing what um, what the community tells them to do. But but uh, this is a case where the 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 blockchain um, like governance, uh, the, 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 the blockchain mechanisms aren't caught up, aren't evolved enough to perfectly execute what the community, you know, the community's desire to take back custody of its own assets and burn them. So, but we think our proposal is like truest to what people want to do. And it's very clear about what needs to be done to do it, which if you're a validator or you're a member of the L1 task force, it's re- it's quite important in this in this case that that the the how is spelled out. It's as opposed to just we want this to be to to be so. Uh, we, we want this result, so let this result be so. Yes, thanks, thanks for that, Alex. I'm happy you've been reconnected. Uh, do you want to make a final comment? I guess you asked your questions, but you couldn't re- make a reply. Yeah, I don't know what's been going on with the connection um, here. Everything in the stream seems to be fine. I was just kept getting disconnected. Um, I've got two more questions, if that's okay, Rocco. They're really, really short ones. They're quite easy to answer as long as they don't. Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> no, being muted sorry. again. I'm being Happy. muted again. Do you um, reply, so I've got... yeah, if, if you get so... muted, you could just reply to the tweet and then I'll read it out. But yeah, try, try and ask it yeah. yourself. Yeah. So how how will the quant team tell retail wallets aside from user wallets? How how so, how will yeah. you actually tell the difference being a decentralized chain, right? And it just being simply good. Yeah, good question. So um, so the I guess the 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 big idea here beyond uh, a very small number of wallets that have already been identified in, uh, in in several different contexts. I mean, the, I mean, the Ozone wallet was publicly called out like na- like nine or 10 months ago um, in the original like kind of USTC white paper. Um, um, but I think, so outside of these like, you know, three, four, five very large wallets, um, um, I, I think... I think the first step is to address those in in um, separate governance proposals, and then after that, um, I, I, like for for USTC to kind of have some extra fail safes, um, you know, if you know, assuming we can get it working again, um, there is going to have to be some community agreed upon system for like if. You know, if uh, if there's USTC in a wallet and there's been no activity for the wallet in a year or in two years or something like, um, I, I do think that I mean, I think it's premature to kind of address this, but but we're we have like five wallets in mind. Let's say I, I don't know the exact number, but like it's definitely less than ten um, that are just like completely dormant um, and have been zombified for for uh for legal reasons um basically it's it's in everyone's legal interest um every like everyone who like was a related party of tfl um it they have a very strong legal interest in uh playing dead um so that like they don't get caught up in this extremely expensive endless uh 
Terra um, litigation that's attracted all these global, you know, Korean, U American, and other Singaporean regulators. Uh, so, like, um, um, those are the wallets we're we're trying to to sort of nuke from orbit. We're not we we want our we want users of the chain today and users of USDC today to be to to come out of this better off. That's who we're working for. Yes, uh, if I may add is that uh, whatever we do, if you don't use USDC, we're dead. So it's not in our interest to uh, chase, uh, like to chase retail users or users away. Uh, it's also, we are not doing this. We are not saying, and that's very important, I think, we are not saying let's take these USDCs from them and use them for us as a funding, etc. We have nothing to earn from it. What we're trying to do is to basically defend as best as possible the, well basically these wallets and the retail's interest that's what alex just said keep that in mind that's super important okay thank you and so my final question definitely my final question i've got to get out of here um uh, uh the the aim of the game right now to burn ust is to mostly prevent right a, a sellout of coins with them going to the oracle rewards pool the community pool wherever the people wanted to sell them the aim of the game was what is happening with LUNC being dumped, sold out consistently in that manner, right? It's just a bucket with holes in we're trying to put water into. Now, the burn history actually shows us that last year, LunkDAO and a few other people from a multi-signature wallet signed a burn transaction, which equated to between 8 and 12% of the supply at that time. That then led to around an 80% price reduction. Um, is this anything that the quant team have actually looked into to actually address? There is historical data to back up that burning could actually lead to that same exact thing that you're trying to prevent. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't get the question. So to make it simple, uh, you, you say that. Uh, a so to make it so to make it simple, simple straight, last yeah. year, LunkDAO burn between eight and twelve percent of the USTC supply. The price yeah. the price then went and dumped by about 80 percent over a course of about three weeks um do you guys know that that happened have you looked at the historical data to show that you know we do so, have more than so more or less scientific tests to show that it will dump the price there's a there's a risk it, of that so so you're saying that uh you're saying that dumping, <laughs> burning USTC, taking them out of the circulation is gonna burn. Is gonna bring the price down, and we shouldn't do it. Basically, if I listen to the no, 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 you've got me. You've got me wrong. You've got me All wrong. Right. I'm 100 percent with burning USTT okay. and and everything like that. I'm yeah. Yes. But, well, I'm not sure that you should correlate the burning of that eight percent or whatever with the dumping of USTC. Do you know what I mean? It, they're yeah, not yeah. necessarily directly correlated. But they correlate. Yeah. They correlate on the charts together, the same time, same burn, so, and we watched yeah, it happen. As yeah, well. but HTC oh, yeah, co right. correlation is not causation. Like the exactly. the fact is, the fact is, if if uh, if if ten percent of a token is uh, is you know removed from any possible future circul circulation, that like that cannot be bearish. Now, maybe markets That's a lot right. of times, a lot of times. They anticipate things beforehand, so I don't know. Like, like maybe a bunch of people uh, piled into this, like piled into the the trade before the event, and you had a buy the mystery, sell the history uh, kind of trading dynamic around the event. But um, uh, that happens a lot in markets. But like, it's not. Um, it, it, in it's, theory, it's, we run okay. the risk of that okay. happening again, then, yes. right? Because no, someone no. Okay. someone could do that again around this no, 800 no, no. mil. All right. all right, all right. Let's make this very simple, right? Very, very simple. Burning USTC, bullish or bearish? No, it's it's bullish. I mean, I get what happy can be. Oh, 100%. It, I, I agree. It's bullish That's to it. burn. But what I'm just what I'm simply saying is, guys, there's historical evidence to back up that a burn of substantial size has happened like this before, and it led to a dump. I'm just asking, on do you think term, that's going to happen on, again? On the short term, on the short term, though, I don't know. I haven't looked at the data, but you're saying there there could be like a dump on the short term. We don't care, right? Basically, what we're saying here. Let me tell you actually, and that's a good point. Let me read. Uh, go back to this. Why do we burn USTC? 
If you want USDC at one dollar, it means that somehow you need to have one dollar for every single USDC. That's it. It really is simple. Now, if you have 10 billion USDCs, you need 10 billion dollars. I don't mind. We can keep it this way. We just need to find 10 billion dollars. I really, it's fine by me. Right? If you don't have 10 billion dollars, then ideally you want to have less token in circulation up to the amount of dollars that you have or that you could get so that you can back the USTC. It's really like, you know, it's, it's important. Actually, that's a fair point. We need to define what is our constraint. If our constraint is the short term price action, that's a different story. And we need to take different actions to maintain the short term price action to the level that we want. Anyone who's looking for short term price action from this is looking for the wrong thing, right? Because the idea is is for you guys to be able to remint USTC to then sell it and buy it at later stages, right? Yeah, at least what I'm saying is that I'm not saying it's it's good or it's bad. I'm saying that it's different. What we're looking at is USTC repeg, so USTC back to a solid value for like a stable value for and and it's going to keep it for later. If someone is looking at short term, uh, trade or price action only it's not bad it's it's his interest it's subjective it's for him that's not our point of view so our actions are driven by or like our constraint which i said i said is basically to repay or bring back usdc to a stable value that when we that then we're going to be able to keep and to maintain that's our constraint if indeed uh you have like a different constraint then you want to do different actions for us the main driver here is to reduce the need for collateral. So the less USTC in, circulating, uh, in circulation, the less need for collateral we need. And that's where we want to go. Agreed. Agreed. I'm all for this repeg. I'm just, I'm all about doing things the right way, I guess, and getting this the first time round. thus me bringing up the point about the bucket with holes in it with the Oracle rewards pool, simply just dishing out USTC. I just don't ever want to see USTC in a position where this burn happens again. Uh, you wrecked. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, t- to get your point, yes, absolutely, you're right. We don't want to, like, you know, we want to have, like, a, an action which makes sense. However, it's very important. You have a huge problem. You can't tackle the huge problem. You need to break it down into smaller problems, which are independent, that you can solve independently, and then put all the solutions back together. We have started by one problem which is basically uh, the protocol that, or the proposal from Redline. So we are testing it and making it right so that we can use it. But if you look at our first statement, which went out on CW when we started to work, the first thing that we said was, hey, guys, by the way, USTC Repeg is going to take many small pieces together. Okay, So we're tackling one of them. There are other pieces which needs to be tackled and that hopefully we'll get to tackle them ourselves or like, you know, if someone has a solution, it's always welcome. But basically, there are lots of, right now, we're only starting and it's like, yes, you look at it, it's like a big mess. There's like lots of issues, like we're giving like away USTC from the Oracle. You have all these wallets, with zombie wallets. You have, how do we do? Assuming tomorrow I give you like all the money you need, can you maintain the peg? We have many, many, many problems. What do we do? We say, okay, we step back. We, we think, we break this down into smaller problems and we prioritize and we tackle them one by one. Boom, 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 boom. That's what we do. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Like I was saying, I'm just worried about us. Basically, we've regained ourselves around the 13th of July from that actual real bad crash from that burn. And I just don't want to see us go down again. I would rather see us all go upwards again. Thank you so much for your time, Rocco. Thank you for having me up. Cheers. After you. You're thank even you when you find thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, no worries, mate. Thanks for your good questions. But your concerns, I think it's just the markets. We see it every year with Litecoin halving. It pumps leading up to the halving. And then a month before, I think I've, I've, if people follow me, I've posted like shorting Litecoin around $100. It, it dipped. So it's just the markets. When there's good news, people buy it, buy the rumor, sell the news. So I don't know what we can do with it. For for USDC, I'm, you know, you'd see probably price go up, 
DJs will ape in, myself included. But then long term, it will depend on the other stuff Fafi, Alex and Redline's working on to see if the price of USDC can, can go up in the long term. And we'll take two more questions. There's a guy, uh, mum to Thamex. He's, he can go next and then we'll take the final question from Zero X and then we'll start rounding up. Zero X is the guy that, well, I wasn't going to go uh, promote Terraport, but might have been tempted but after reading zero x's threads uh, i definitely didn't take part in it so yeah we'll, we'll let zero x ask the final question go ahead um mam to tamax um hey guys i just had a quick question and you may have talked about it earlier in the space and if you did you can just say we talked about it earlier and i'll go back and i'll listen to the beginning of the space because i came in a little late but I saw the tweet from Lunk Dow regarding the Fireblocks uh, infrastructure and read through some of the comments on it. And I was just wondering, it was a little alarming to me. And I was just wondering if this is a legitimate concern. And if it is, how big of a concern would it be? And do we have any, I guess, pathways for damage control for something like that? And that's that's all I've got. That's my question. Yes, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, I got uh, that's frankly the least thing I wanted to hear today. Like the least mm -hmm. of them all. And we heard like you know yeah, uh, Link Dao is trolling, etc. Well, actually, he's raising, he's making some very good and valid points in there as uh, as usual. It's a very smart guy, bringing the right things. Uh, we need. To look into it the thing is that uh, it raises the point of who looks into it who is actually our official like uh, you know contact point with exchanges what are people doing etc we focused more on the modeling on the USTC modeling we made a very specific and detailed proposal for doing something very specific right so that's our focus clearly we're very concerned about the, the health of the chain and what goes on and it's very sad to see that we, I mean, if this is true or this could happen and we've been doing so much good work and if it's, we're getting somewhere right now, uh, like, you know, that would be like a, a terrible event. So we need to, to be honest, we need to get together and start to think uh, rationally about what's going on, who actually takes the lead on these things. So TGF, I think TGF is not TGF anymore. They have moved on. They're like uh, focused on block entropy, uh, which is another blockchain, another thing. Uh, L1 team, uh, I'm not sure what they're up to. I haven't catch up with them uh, lately. So, uh, you know, w w that's super important. That's extremely important. And also, another thing is that, for example, in this case, what may be very upset last week is we are focused on other things. And then I learned about the proposal for burning USTC like you guys. So it came out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming. And it starts creating this whole chaos and cacophonia. And basically, uh, like, you know, it would be so much easier if the author of the proposal just sends a DM. We talk, we know each other, we talk. So just shoot a DM. Hey, guys, I've been thinking of doing this, etc. What do you think? And then we discuss, we sing together, we can bring in the community and have like a healthy discussion. And then we move forward, like together. When you start having like... Of course, that's decentralized and we want everyone to be able to, to do what they wish to do through governance, etc. That's fine. But then keep in mind that you have partners on the other side. And when everyone starts taking random actions left and right without any synchronization, this does look very bad. Okay. It means like it makes people don't want to, you know, just want to go away from us. And, you know, it's very important that, that, you know, I'm not saying like, I think it would be terrible if we have only one single team, but everyone has to go through them and they have to do all the proposals and all that would be terrible. On the other hand, frankly, like getting a little bit of synchronization does not eat bread. It only takes a DM and, and we do it and that's fine. But the problem is that you have many factions or many groups who are trying to take, uh, like, you know, opportunities to basically shine. And they would do it, as you're seeing in this case, at the expense of everyone else and the network. This is not right. So back to this point in particular, we need to talk to Lung Dao, see where we're at and see what we can do to actually uh, mitigate this. But yes, let's hope that uh, we can do something about it. Okay. 
hope that answers your question. Um, I've had a DM from Candy Protocol um, saying that initially there was one billion in the Ozone um, wallet, and now he's down to eight hundred. Are you guys aware of that? And where did the two hundred uh, mil go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I banged that drum. Uh, while, remember when uh, this came up a while ago, and I said, uh, "Remember." Um, there was a billion, not 800 million, right? So there, there's a billion USTC um, that that Ozone uh, protocol custodied, and the wallet only has 800 million today. So, um, yeah, um, I guess, uh, you know, it, it's hard to understand what was going through their minds when, um, when they don't respond to any outreach whatsoever. Um, but I guess... Um, I guess as I as I sort of mentioned earlier, there's uh, there's plenty of reasons to think that their mind is already made up um, in terms of how they want to proceed. So, um, of course, we don't know we we don't know yet. Um, but um, if you are just objectively looking at the evidence, uh, there's um, yeah. Anyway, um, it's a great question, and we don't have we don't have a, a, a stone cold answer for it right now. Yes, but uh, that's a, f a further point, like HCC is still here, so you know when you say like, oh, it's not nice to burn people's wallets and all and all, like there is 200 million USTC missing in this wallet, please go find out because it feels that this belongs to us. So, you know, it's a very tricky situation here, and contrary to what people may have pictured to you, that yeah, don't worry, everything is going extremely fine, we've been talking to them, uh, quantum is horrible because they want to burn people's assets, blah, 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 like you, there is more depth into this topic and you should really actually, these are very good questions that you want to ask and that gives you like some good idea of the mindset or what's going on and all. Okay, thanks for that guys. Um, final question, Zero X, do you want to go ahead, mate? Yeah. Hey everyone. OX here. Um, how's it going? Alex? Good to Red see you Ryan. here. Yeah, I thought I'd swing by in between launching my new project which i won't shill um actually it's really interesting on the fireblocks stuff so if anybody doesn't know what fireblocks kind of is it's i think of it like a safe way like a way for institutional money to invest into your token and they have like risk assessments i remember when they launched it back in 2021 i think i can't remember Anyway, and uh, it's, I mean, I guess the takeaway is to read the notes where they sort of said why they've uh, stopped supporting Lunk. And they've stopped, like, so it means that it is much, much harder for institutional money to buy Lunk, basically, or, or trading guests, desks, with anyone with fiduciary duties to their liquidity providers. So they say things like unreliable infrastructure, uh, sporadic, uncoordinated decision-making, regarding upcoming upgrades and changes uh ch too frequent changes in the fee structure so that they're literally saying stop fucking around with the the burn tax uh and then like technical documentation whatever um so they're basically saying like they've, they've done a risk assessment they've they've looked at it for six months and they think there's a very high loss of, of uh, risk of loss of funds so I think that's the lesson. Yours, you know, I, I, wait, I, I seem to recall somebody in the community, I can't remember his name, but somebody in the community was like jumping up and down 10 months ago about what a bad idea the burn tax was, what was going to be. Dude, who was that guy? I, I can't, I can't remember that guy's name. Does anybody no. remember? It must be a fudder, whoever it is. It must be a fudder. It must have been a fucking fudder. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyway, but, uh, yeah. Well, look, I, no, it's not in all seriousness, though. Um, uh, that sucks. Um, I think, um, you know, we do have a lot of people in the community who, like, this is kind of like their first uh, sort of plunge into decentralization, into, you know, uh, uh, I won't even call it decentralized gover governance because that's a scam 99% of the time, but um, uh, into, like, like blockchain operations, let's say, and... Um, and they're not really aware of like industry nor you know the, the kind of norms that have kind of evolved in our industry for a reason and uh you know um uh i i think generally generally kind of um 
making changes. Uh, you know, one of our guys, the guys on our team, Bilbo, um, he spent a lot of time building this very nice um, sort of flow chart about like the different fees and stuff that exist because it's, it, it doesn't seem like it's really documented anywhere. A lot of the changes to the, um, to the, to the code of the chain, they're, they're like very poorly documented, which makes it very hard for other developers to kind of, to figure out what they need to do um, in order to, to make something work if something doesn't work as expected. And, um, you know, th these are, these are things that the community should, um, should absolutely respect. And, you know, the, the Fireblocks has worked with hundreds, if not thousands of blockchains. Uh, and, um, like that's, that's their job. And if, if they have a, a risk assessment of our chain, that's really high, um, it probably would do well for the community to like, you know, be a little bit more sober minded sometimes in terms of, um, you know, you know, certain influencers who can run around and like promise the sky, you know, I don't know. I'm getting triggered. I'm just going to shut up. It's okay. Yes, that's, We're all triggered. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that's a very fair point though. So, uh, I think we have, um, all right. So, uh, it's beautiful, uh, like, you know, to take action and, and, and to go with heroic, like, uh, governance proposals and all. Uh, you really need to think about these things, right? Every time you want to reverse something, you want to revert a change which is already here, or you want to make big changes, or that we don't actually have uh, clarity or we don't get to, to actually talk together about the path forward and what we try to do. So what we're trying to do, we give updates on a weekly basis. That got uh, HCC very upset, but there was a reason for it so that people know what's going on and that we can actually act early as a community to say, hey, this is not the right path forward and we should perhaps shift or pivot there so that we don't have to do something and then revert it back and then revert it back in and so on and so forth. And and yes, uh, government governance proposal like is amazing because it allows anyone with like tokens to basically like tokens to go ahead and try to to have like a say or at least have a say in, in, in how the blockchain is going and running. It doesn't mean anyone or everyone should do it, including myself. And we need to have a bit more like discussion and, and somehow it feels that like the internal fight because I don't like these guys, because I don't trust these guys a bad actor or because this and that, you know, as a result, you get that people who are following and are going to put at the end of the day, the big dollars on the table, they see that and they say, wait a minute, like, you know, with this, I'm never going to go nowhere, right? Because the moment someone does something, someone else will try very hard for his interest to actually roll it back. And we're like kind of fighting around like, you know, $500 million, you know, and, and the governance. And, and without realizing that people are actually watching. When people come and it, it feels like amazing to go ahead and put a tweet and say, hey, what's going on with the sex? Uh, you guys are lying because you are not talking to the sex, USTC team, you're just trying to build money, blah, 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 etc. We told you, we've been very clear about it. We can't talk about it. We have spoken to some people. They have said, we don't want this to go out. We don't want to talk about it. We've said it. We've said it in rep uh, recorded spaces like now. We've put like written statement about it. Now, if you keep forcing or if you keep like tagging these people, it's going to make them upset and it's going to make them want to leave because they can't be bothered. So we really need like to, to step back and take it easy a bit more about these things, right? The way it's cool to, you know, to, 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 to get involved and to get to decide. It also means that you have influence, you have a voice, and you have to be careful about it. So that's a very important message, I think. Sorry, uh, yes, for interrupting. So is there anything we can do, Zero X? What would your suggestions be? I know it's not good news. Uh, what what can we do as a community or? Um, mm, no. There's nothing <laughs> we can do. <laughs> We're just screwed. I think we have to listen. Yes. Do, are, you, are you suggesting we should uh, listen to annoying fudders more? Is that is that what you're telling us? No, I, I think even if you listen to me, this this could have happened anyway. Um, Fireblocks integrated Luna when it was on the up, and institutions wanted to buy it and get access to the ecosystem. Um, 
And when you have uncoordinated community-run governance, it's pretty hard. Like they wouldn't integrate like now. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty tough. Uh, yeah, they, they they you you need like to negotiate with these people. Like they need fees. Like it's it's pretty tough. Even if you have a centralized like team um, to coordinate this sort of thing in the first place. So yeah, it's pretty tough. But at the same time, um, it's not doesn't mean that Lunk's going to get delisted. Um, like by by automatically from like centralized exchanges, I think like Binance listed Lunk or Luna before um, Fireblocks integrated. So I, I think um, yeah, most centralized exchanges will still keep it up for a while, and then we just see where we go next. But just stop stop fucking around, basically. That's um, that's what that means. Thanks for flooding yours. Always appreciate it. Anytime. Okay, um, I think we'll start rounding up now. Uh, we'll give the final chance for Zero X Redline, Alex. If you guys want to make a final comment before we start rounding up, I would like to. Uh, first thing is uh, thanks very much for the people supporting a lot in the background and anyone, everyone. Uh, in particular, uh, I wanted to remind people like we've seen like uh, lately some bad tweets like going to Foluna because she means bad and she's bad and she's terrible, going all the way to calling her a bitch and all that wasn't cool. Let's not do that. Let's not get there. It's one thing. The other thing is that please, we do reports, we do updates, go and read them. If you don't like reading, look at the charts. Things are moving and going towards the right direction. And if people come and start saying, oh, they're not doing all this and that, it's your duty, it's your job to remind them that no, it's not. And, and to basically not give a voice to these people that then can lead to the events that Ears just described right now. It's like important that, you know, we kind of have a minimum of common sense within the community and that, you know, uh, we remember that besides like the uh, Lung Dao, who is terrible and this and that, we start to, you know, put ourselves together and think and look at the facts and not, of course, it's good sometimes to ask questions, but not get uh, fall to the, you know, bad, good, bad actor, they want to take over, they want this, they want that. There is like plenty of money uh, involved and on the table, not necessarily mine or yours, but some people at the very least. So let's keep that in mind and you want them to stay, you don't want them to leave. Thanks for that, Fafi. And and what's the future steps for um, the Quant team? So I can't remember how how many weeks you've been going on. Um, you guys going to make a new prop up? So what's the future steps yeah. for Quant team? Yes, yes, yes. So basically, uh, current prop we can say that is done. It was like one month. I think we've been doing some very good progress. So be, getting able to to have the tools that we needed was a lot of the work for the first prop. It's not the favorite work, but uh, needs to be done. Now we have the tooling. Uh, next step for us is to get uh, a report out and start sharing it with like partner sex and all so we're doing that and also to put a prop forward for the other month so people who are not sure go back to the initial prop on cw there is a thread for it you get all the milestone all the deliverables i've posted to you where we are so you can easily see where we are it's like you don't even need like to ask anyone or whatever you just see oh it looks like does this look like the uh, divergence uh, protocol has been implemented? Yes. Does this look like the buyback has been implemented? Well, there is a chart. So I think it has been implemented. Now we need to tweak it. We need to share with the exchanges. We need to get like the best of it, etc. That will be the second month. And we're going to be putting a proposal forward for that soon, maybe uh, this week, I think. However, uh, things have been delayed a bit. Uh, because of the recent event regarding this wallet. And that's why I was saying earlier, like that made me like very upset because like, you know, it changes everything in terms of focus and all. But basically, I think we're on the good path. We're doing some good thing. It's super useful. And the first uh, temporary, I should say, report is about to get out. Uh, and there will be another prop for another month. Same deal, same everything. Voilà. Okay, now look forward to that. I think it'd be good to see what happens with the recent prop that you've put up for the 800 mil burn, and then we can probably look up look at the for the new uh, quarter uh, prop from the quant team after. Um, my two cents will be: I'm really excited uh, for this burn, and I like Alex's from the start. His approach is like try and get things done, and that's sort of you know 
I, I'm like that as well. Um, I'm not that technical guy. Even in my previous job as a program manager, I mean, I wasn't the most technical guy, but I was really keen to like you know do things, try things, to get things done. And obviously, we don't want to do something wrong. Um, I want to get this burn done, but obviously, people are raising concerns like Happy Cat to Crypto, and I've raised some legal concerns. We want to do it the right way, but. I'm just happy to see some actions being taken and there's been numerous proposals, numerous things, arguments, but not, not much gets done. So um, again, I'm not just singing your praise because, you know, mates with Fafi or Lunk 6 9 but yeah, genuinely I'm looking forward to it and, and hopefully it's not just a short-term pump and it's something more longer term. So that's just my two cents. Um, Alex, did you want to say something? I think you might unmute for a sec. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm all set. Cool. Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, I'll reach out to you again, uh, Fafi. Maybe in a couple of weeks' time we can do this. Uh, people that requested, we've been going on for two hours, so maybe next time uh, we can uh, let you ask questions. And Lunatech, uh, hopefully next time you can speak a bit more. You've not said a single word. So thank you all. Uh, no, it's fine, mate. It's fine. <laughs> no worries. Well, thank you guys uh, for tuning in, and I, I just really enjoy speaking to you guys. And, yeah, hopefully speak to you guys in a couple of weeks. Good night, all.